Hi, my friend. Happy September. Yes, I always like September because it just has that easing into the fall feel, even though in Northern Virginia, it's usually quite warm in September, uh, but it just, you just get a new vibe. Um, we had a heavy rain and then all the temperatures cooled down and it's just been so lovely. It will get warm again. It will have more, and sometimes in October, we'll have some pretty uh, warm days, but it just puts you in a whole different mood when it's so pleasant to be outside. Okay, so for September, we have some overall themes that go on. Uh, one is this National Sewing Month. So that's pretty cool. You'll see a lot of things going on from different businesses for sewing month. And it is also cat month. Isn't it like cat month every month if you have a cat? <laughs> now, I've never had a cat. Um, my brother and then eventually my dad and his wife had Smokey the cat. So I have uh, that is my limited experience and maybe some friends over time, you know, the kids, some friends had cats and as adults, my friends have cats, but I have never personally had a cat. So, you know, someday I might do that someday down the road, many years from now. <laughs> So I want to give you a follow-up, just a little follow-up from yesterday. When I was doing all the math to show you the basics of, you know, just sort of walking through how to make some adjustments to a pattern, what I do mostly is I work on the computer. I have a grid system. I use a software package that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, you know, so I just hope it doesn't break because there's no <laughs> support for it. Uh, but it's a grid system. So if I want to change the length of a border, I change it and then I can click and see, well, what size is it now? But I have to understand the mechanics behind it. I can't just randomly do it and not understand the mechanics. So I do a little bit of sketching on the paper like I showed you, but mostly I will do everything in the computer. And did you have a lot of fun? with Norm and his Nanette getting married. So cute, aren't they the sweetest little lovebirds? And Kendall did such a fabulous job with the video, so you have to go see that. He hosted and planned the entire wedding. That was all Kendall's idea. Uh, Kendall made Nanette. I didn't make Nanette, Kat's Kendall's. And um, she is going to go, of course, be traveling now. They're a couple, they're married. And so they will be going on to visit more of our friends. And it's going to be such a fun little adventure to see everything going on. So be sure you're subscribed to Kendall's channel. The link is below. Remember, there's a description box below this video and everything I talk about is down there. Occasionally I forget something, but that's where it is. So open that up, take a look at it. It's there. That way you don't have to ask me for it. It's available down below. Okay. We are on the next block for, will you be my neighbor? And we're on the actual last row. And mine is a fairly planned a color sequence. And I want to talk a bit about that because I have the next patterns, right? So I have them here and I want to talk through color placement because that's really important. Plus it eliminates a lot of decisions. Like if I'm going to make the house primarily red, I don't need to look at the black, the green, and the blue for house options. I just need to zone in on what I'm working on for that month. So this is our next one. Uh, and there's a couple of things I'll tell you about it when we go to the other side of the table. But first, let's take a look at this up close so I can talk through where I'm going with it. I have a definite color sequence. It didn't start out that way, but once I did a first row and then started actually looking at the second row, that's when this happened. So we have a red house, a turquoise, there's some black, a green. So I didn't do a full black uh, house in black fabric up there, but I have on the other rows. And what I'm doing is being sure this is balanced. I don't want all the red houses, you know, down to the you know fourth row on the same side. I don't want a diagonal running, you know, where I see green, 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 something like that. So what I've decided is that I will put red for the house I'm doing today. So, you know, it's a little heavier on the red, which I'm totally fine with. Uh, then the next one will be the sailboat and I can switch these colors. Um, so let me just leave those for a second. The last house, is a heavy weighted house. It's kind of bigger like these. And I am going to take the teal and put the weight of that teal down here. So I'll have that teal, teal, aqua, whichever you want to call it. And that'll be down on the bottom right. So in here, uh, the green and the 
um, black could, I mean the green and the red could go either way because I'm doing black today. Did I mess that up? Anyways, so th this is the boat. So I'm going to do the boat in red because it has water and I don't want the green there. So then this house will be green and the, underneath the next one and it'll have green tree. So that'll be a heavier green element, which will be really good. All right, so that's where I am and I've, I'm going to show you I've written it on the papers. So what I've done is I've written these colors. So I'm the next house, today's house, I'm going to do in black. The boat I will do in red, and I really could have switched between the red and the green. But I decided that the water might be more turquoise or greenish, so the boat will be red. And then the green for this house, which I have to decide, it's got like a funky double roof. I, I don't know if I'm going to do that double roof um, with uh, two the polka dots. We'll see both polka dots or just one polka dot. We'll see when we get there and then the last one will be another turquoise house. Um, so that is where we are and we're going to go over and look at picking some fabric for block 13. So picking out the fabric as I go along gets a little bit tighter and tighter and tighter because I might want to use some different fabrics than I used before rather than doing a lot of repeats. So let's see what I have here. So we're working with this block, which has a flower element and it has the bird. It has the body of the house and then this sort of accent piece. So I have to decide, are these two different fabrics from the house or will the accent pieces be, the light will be the same as the house? I mean, you can play around with that. You know, do I do these scrappy or all the same? All the trees are scrappy, which is fun, but there's one, one other flower and I did all the leaves the same for that flower. So I could go either way. Of course, I got my background and the roof. So those are set. Now I have, for the flowers, I have a bunch of these. So this is what I use for the other flower. So, and there's a plenty of it. So I might just do the flower the same as I did before. And the, the, um, I might actually just try to find the same red and teal that was in there. The red was, let's see, I've got some stuff over here. Oh, here it is. The red was this for the back of the flower. And then the teal, uh, center of it had like some peppermints or something. So I don't know. I'll have to hunt around in there, see what I can find for the center of the flower. Um, now the house itself, okay, the house itself, if I'm going to do black, I have a couple of options where I have to have enough fabric. I can do the words. I did a lot of the plaid. I've done a lot with the plaid. So I think I'm going to not use the plaid for this house. It's used in several others, so I'm not going to use it for this one. And I want to use, I mean, it's a big piece, so I want to use something with a little personality. So here's the piece that, um, there's a turquoise piece like this with the little peppermints that I did the center of the other house. I'm just leaving that there to remind me because it's not enough for the house. I mean, it could be for the base. What is the base? You have to look. The base is five and a half by ten and a half. Uh, so let me just look quick. He's 10, so no, you, I would have to piece this. If I wanted the body of it, I'd have to put a little piece at the bottom or the top, which would be okay. I wouldn't be horribly, you know, opposed to that, but then um, I'm not sure I have enough to go around here. I'd have to squeeze it out. And I think that's just a maybe on him. Now this piece is the same, same issue. These were um, layer cakes, so, they are not 10 and a half, uh, which means anything I use for here, I would have to squeeze a little bit. So I think I'm going to eliminate the squeezing thing and just <clears throat> to like this piece, there's not enough of it. So by this time I start to narrow it down to what do I have enough of. Now this has too much white. I don't want that much white uh, in the house, although that would be super cute on its own. So I'm narrowing it down to a few things. Here's another 10 inch square. This I have enough of, the snowflakes. And the, the dots, there, there's enough of that. See, it's got length on it. Um, and I think I can squeeze out if I needed the five. Because I also, if I, I think I'm going to use the light as the same fabric. But I like the snowflakes. I think I didn't use anything like that. So the snowflakes will be for the house. 
and then I am going to do the half square triangle with snowflake and the red. Now in the middle here I want to find something really fun so you know maybe I have to find a light I've got so many lights really cute things but I have did I do the soldier yet I think I haven't done him yet because it's like there's a three and it's three and a half is that big enough oh yeah so I could put a single soldier in the middle he's just one though so it's kind of wimpy I don't know I might have to look through here and find another one I'll surprise you with what I decide on maybe I'll pull a scenery from here since uh, I have a little bit more maybe like Santa is that big enough so you got to go through there and look I could just get Santa in there so we'll see I might cut that and see how it looks all right let me get to all of that cut and then I will talk about the applique of the bird after I get the house made I cut out two reds to test here and uh, the stripe look at this look how that stripe just pops off of there and I decided on the peppermints for the window so there we go stripes for the win now I'll cut I'll cut these and these and make the half square triangles here's another little trick I do for the leaves I basically have taken the squares like this and placed it where it should be and folded it as it should be and put a pin so I did one for each direction for the leaves that way I'll have these sitting here as I sew the other four two of there'll be three of each total and then when I get to this one I'll have already made the previous one so I can use it as an example and that just helps me out if you want to cut two of these at a time so you're going to cut two light and two dark squares cut them 3.5 inches square and then make the traditional two and a, two at a time half square triangles and then you will trim them when you go to trim them you trim them to three because the finished size is two and a half so each one the finished size is two and a half so you're trimming you're, you're working with an unfinished size of three inches so that's what I have to trim them down to all of these and when you open it this will be three inches and when it's sewn into the quilt it will be two and a half which will be exactly what you need here here's the house without the applique so there is a circle to go here for the flower and then the little bird and I want to show you something about the bird because you have to be really careful with fusible applique so this bird um, on paper is facing towards the house which as you can see is what we want we want the bird facing towards the house but when you do fusible applique your shapes have to be reversed and right here it says where I circled it it says it has not been reversed that means in order to trace this on the fusible you have to trace it from the back side and you can put this up against a window and you will be able to see that shape really easily or on a light box and so then I will trace it onto the fusible here I will use these two for the flower and the bird body is going to be this will be the body and the little belly and then the beak so I'm going to get that all put down now and the finished house here we go I have the bird look how sweet he is so I have mine going in because this is the last block on the quilt and I want the bird looking in towards the uh, rest of the row and the little uh, flower now these have to be applied, and I'm going to do that tonight because otherwise I'd be up till eight o'clock trying to get this video here for today so the applique will be tonight I'll do that it don't want that won't take long it's fusible by machine <sighs> okay let's see want to see how he looks well it's going to be hard I didn't put this all the way up there so I'll just sort of hang him on the bottom there can you see him down there yeah so the black that's going to be good so I'll shift all this up next time or maybe another day before the next one I'll put it I'll put it up and oh that looks good he looks good let's uh <laughs> let's do a mail call because I have a really cute mail call today uh, first is a card a postcard so this is from both Gina uh, from Colorado and Kelly from Vancouver Washington yes so the two of them met up and they sent me a postcard 
<laughs> I think Gina has sent me a couple before. So fun. And I love these vintage ones, the vintage look of the city. Yeah, so cute. Thank you. Thank you for thinking of me while you're on vacation or whatever you're doing, shop hopping or something. <laughs> Okay, this next one is chock full of things and lots of cute little notes. So I know exactly why everything is in here, which is just so darn adorable. Okay, this is from Peg in Iowa and Peg goes by Peggers. So she wrote that so I would know for sure. <laughs> First is this really, look at this beautiful card. Look at that. Yes, it's fiber. Yeah, that's a little tiny... <gasps> A little tiny block I'm gonna have to see can that come out because that'll have to go in my parts my parts uh, bin and go into one of my quilts don't you think I'm gonna enjoy it like this for a while so pretty peg or peggers <laughs> so next you saw this because red zinger excellent excellent yep we're going to be doing the red zinger the selvage quilt and she said she's never tried it but i have lot had lots of celestial teas and they're really really beautiful uh, they taste wonderful and i've been to the um uh, you could take a little tour so we were at the celestial seasoning tour uh the tea tour but they had um they weren't working that day but they still gave a tour so that was fun and then she found some selvages and these have, look at this, cars, she said for Mr. Greg, right? And look, tomato, tomato. <laughs> There's some trains, look at the edge. I'm just gonna have to go through and find all of the fun edges when we get started on the Red Singer, which is this month in a couple of weeks. And then she said, uh, she found this sweater fabric which she thought would be cute for when we do the sweater weather. We're doing a quote from the sweater weather book. And look how cute that is. Look, I love, I love, love, love novelty fabrics. Just love them. Ah, oh, okay, but wait, there's more. <laughs> now she has a note and says that she uh, made some uh, random blocks for me to do something with, and they are so cute. Okay, the first, choo 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 choo. So there's a tiny little choo choo, and this is from a Lori Holt book look how cute that is and then the choo-choo has a big brother <laughs> so sweet that could be a whole pillow look how cute these are but wait there's one more we have got a llama oh i was so excited oh my gosh peg this is just or peggers this is just so darn cute look at his little mouth look at this or is that his nose that's his nose he's twitching his nose and then this is my fabric line. Isn't that sweet? Oh, you're so thoughtful, just so thoughtful as well. Since Norm is traveling and I don't have a Norm to hang up in here anymore, what do you say? Should we vote? Should the llama become the next little mascot for my studio room? And uh, I think it's a girl, so she needs a name. A drama llama won't be it. She's <laughs> <laughs> she can't be a drama llama. So, oh my goodness, how sweet. These are just incredible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mwah. All right, so will you be my neighbor? Block 13, and you are on your way to the last row along with me. I'm so excited. So I love you. Have a wonderful September 1st, and uh, thank you for joining me, and I will see you online.